Good evening and a very warm welcome to Frugal Full. My name's Lara and this is a frugal living and budgeting channel. And I'm actually filming in the evening for once, which is quite unusual for me. And I thought that while we had a chat today, I'm making some sweet treats. They're not the healthiest treats, but sometimes we've got to have a little bit of what we fancy, so. <laughs> They're frugal and budget friendly and I'm going to have a chat about other things that I'm trying to consider, think about, figure out how I can prioritise while balancing costs because the costs aren't just about the cost of what it's going to be in monetary terms but it's also from an ecological point of view, an environmental point of view. It frustrates me so much that quite a lot of green options seem to cost more to buy. I'm trying to find ways as a consumer that I can make more ethical choices for caring for the planet that are going to have less of an impact, that are going to have less of a carbon footprint. It's very difficult to achieve that because so many of the things that we have in our cupboards so many things we buy as food consumers and it's really hard to avoid this but many of them contain ingredients that come from all over the world and even for example I'd heard about um hold on just going to screen. Ooh, bing. yeah we'll just use that one I'd heard about um apparently oh, was it prawns that sometimes, for example, prawns are, are caught off the, off the coast of Scotland, off the west coast in the Atlantic, and then they get shipped to, I can't remember, I think it may be South America, to get shelled, then get shipped all the way back. And I think to myself, it just feels so wasteful, all those extra emissions, carbon dioxide emissions, from the transportation and the thing is the more carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere the more that that contributes to climate change and global warming which is having worse and worse impacts on not just humans but all of all of life around the world we're seeing more and more of that with the freak weather that we get and it's a really difficult balance and it's just so hard trying to make conscious, responsible consumer choices when we're limited by the availability of what's in the supermarkets and also by the price tag in many respects. And sometimes if there are more affordable options, they're not always the greener options and sometimes the more ethical options are much dearer and that's not achievable or sustainable to keep up in a budget but it's also as a planet not sustainable for us to exploit natural resources the way we are as a species and on an individual level I know we're limited in what we can do but one of the ways I try and kind of navigate it and I can't be at peace with it, but one of the ways I try and respond to it for some kind of peace of mind is just thinking about certain decisions I'm making and trying to find ways that are realistic in my budget to make some slight tweaks so I feel like if there's something that I'm aware is going to help even a little bit, it makes me feel better to feel like at least I'm trying to do something for you know, for, for my own kind of conscience and and because I care and just even little steps can help. There's a ripple effect. Lots of little steps create a, li uh, a, li a little effect, <laughs> a ripple effect. <laughs> so, for example, one of the big things is coffee. Now, what I'm really chuffed about is that the coffee I quite often buy is the Lidl's own brand. And it's this kind of thing. And it's Rainforest Alliance, which I'm really happy about. 
So at least I know that there's some sustainability in how they're gaining this coffee. Um, and hopefully that means because it's Rain Alliance certified that the working conditions are as good as possible for people as well. And trying to minimise the exploitation of the natural environment and doing it in a more sustainable way. Because there is only a finite amount of rainforest and it's disappearing all the time. So the more we can find alternatives to over farming and, and agricultural practices that are just completely depleting the ecosystem there. And we're so dependent all over the world on not just the Amazon for the goods that we buy, but also all those trees, all those incredible trees, they absorb carbon from the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. Because when plants absorb carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, they produce oxygen. Um, and they take some of the carbon out of the air, which helps with the issues with global warming. It's like a carbon reservoir. So the more trees we lose there, the less of an impact it can have to help us regulate the climate. So, I mean, it's a major, major thing to try and protect the rainforests. And there are a lot more things being done, but it's just even a wee step forward to feel that if we're able to buy more and more products that are supporting that are supporting the rainforest, such as things with the Rainforest Alliance mark. I'll just grab some milk as well. So I was having a look at milks that are available in the supermarket and unfortunately they're a lot more expensive. I'm talking three times more than I was spending on soya milk. But I want to cut back on my milk intake anyway. But for example, buying things like the Alpro and the Oatly, it's not perfect, but it's B Corporation certified and it's non it's non GMO soya, which is good too. Because I don't know about you, but I don't particularly want to be consuming soya that's been genetically modified. That's not really very appealing, is it? Um, but yeah, at least with the, the B Corp, there's some sustainability. And when I was in the supermarket earlier on and I was looking at the milks, and as I say, the Alpro and the, the larger Alpro oat, and was it the oat? I think it was the oat. And the Alpro, no, the Oatly. They had another kind of um, certified emblem on them that was to do with sustainability as well. So I felt like it's good to know that there are some ethical choices for the milk, the oat or soya milk. It's not perfect, but it's it's a more ethical choice than the uh, than the one I was buying. But as I say, it was only fifty p for that, whereas these are one pound fifty. Sometimes there are deals though on the milks. And like I also said, I want to cut back on the amount of milk I put in my coffee. So it's going to help me um, to kind of lose a few pounds, hopefully, because I think there's a lot of hidden calories in all the milk that I drink for my coffee and things. So it's good. <laughs> and then the reason I'm making a snack now is I'm using up. So I had some marshmallows in the cupboard anyway. I think I'm going to put them in. I have some cereal. I've got either cornflakes or I've got um, some rice snaps, which I'll probably stick with these because they're the ones that are open. So I'm going to put them in the snack. The plan is I'm going to batch cook and freeze a bunch of these. See, the thing is though, like even things like breakfast cereal, now there's all these... And the more processed it is, the more hidden ingredients, then the harder it is to have a clue where it all comes from. But, and also the less healthy as well. So it's not ideal, but I've got to use them up anyway. But, um, what was I going to say about this? 
no it wasn't this one I think it must be this one and it says about containing soya it may contain traces of soya yeah allergy advice may contain traces of soya so where's the soya from is it the soya that's produced in South America where what happens is the more the more soya agricultural farming there is to produce a lot of it's to do with producing animal feed but if it's not done sustainably then they um, come into the land that's being used by the cattle ranchers and then there's a thing called the arc of deforestation where the cattle farming then has to encroach on the rainforest and it pushes them back but there are more things now to try and protect the forests so that people can't farm on them and, and burn the land for that and clear the land for that as much but um you know there's still that pressure that they be wanting to do that unless there can be ways to sustainably farm so that people can still earn a livelihood but do it in a way that's not so threatening to the environment so yeah where does that soya come from but apparently quite a lot of the soya milk that's um, produced, apparently quite a lot of it's from, um, that the ingredients are from European resources. So it's not necessarily soya that's come from rainforest territory, but whichever forests we're talking about, if it's been sustainably sourced, that's it, I think it's called the FSC the two big cartons of milk I saw in Asda earlier. I think it's called the FSC. It's um, related to forest sustainability, I think. Hope I've got that right. But you know, like I'm starting to look out for these kind of things just to try and be a more conscious consumer on a budget as far as possible. So there'll be marshmallows, some cereal, and then of course chocolate. I have the munchies for sweet things at the moment, but the idea is going to be freezing some, like I say. So I was looking to try and find out what affordable big bars of chocolate there are that are as ethical as possible within a budget. So I found this milk chocolate by Asda and it's got the We Rainforest Alliance emblem on it, logo on it. So I thought, great. So I bought that and then I realised it contains palm fat. So I was like, oh. See, sometimes the thing is, it's difficult sometimes because you can't always win. So from the sustainability, from the rainforest point of view, it's great. But then it's got palm oil, or palm fat, I should say. So that means it's growing, growing the plants for that then the orangutans lose their habitat i think it's in indonesia the lovely orangutans it puts them under threat and it's also not good for the environment in other ways so it's a, such a difficult one to find products that are gonna have the least impact and you get like you get other kinds of fair trade things and but the prices can really hike up for far less chocolate so just wanted to try and find some products where it's a happy medium and I don't eat a huge amount of chocolate but for cooking chocolate and things so I looked in Lidl they've got fair trade cocoa this is cooking chocolate so it's fair trade I don't know how far the fair trade-ness extends if it's to do with the sustainable forestry or not but it doesn't have any palm oil or palm fats by the looks of it. So I'm like, hooray, that's great. But it does say may contain soya. So there is a chance there could be issues that way. So it's such a difficult one. It's kind of swings and roundabouts, isn't it? So I figured I'm going to just try and do the best I can with it and not not dwell on it too much you know but try I'll try and do what I can and then accept that that's as much as I can do at this point 
But what I've decided to do is any time I find products that seem to be a really great option, I'm going to start keeping a wee notebook and recording what I find and, um, and then that way I can use that for reference and then it can kind of help guide me with the choices I'm making. And it's impossible to get the perfect balance, but even some wee steps in that direction, I feel like it helps anyway. So I just wanted to share my thoughts with you today while making these tasty snacks. Let me know if you have any great tips. Let us know in the comments below if you have any great tips about finding sustainable food sources on a budget. And I know things like eating cleanly, having lots of fruit and veg, having fewer processed things growing our own where possible. I know all these things make a big difference, but it's always so valuable hearing ideas and tips. So please share with us in the comments below and introduce yourself. It'd be really lovely to hear your take on this. Such an interesting topic and it's one that's relevant to all of us. And I know that sometimes there's so much going on and budgets are tight and sometimes the last thing that people can be thinking about is making environmental choices if they're way beyond a budget and I totally a million percent get that and um, you know it's uh, an issue that's definitely really close to my heart so if this resonates for you as a topic and there's anything you'd like to share with us please do that would be really fantastic in the meantime, let's get cooking. So I will be back soon. I'm just going to try not to drip this on me because it's hot. Look at that lovely melted chocolate. So I'll keep on doing this. I was going <laughs> to... I was, I was going to just use half the second bar. I'm like, no, go on, might as well finish it off. However, with the marshmallows, I've cut them in half so that they're smaller and they'll mix in a lot better. So there's a good whack of them there. The rest of them, next time I visit my mum, if they last that long, they're going to be confiscated and she can look after them for me so that I don't end up eating them all. <laughs> The problem is once something's open, I struggle to have the willpower not to munch them all. So that's also definitely something that would help from an environmental point of view. It's consuming less by literally consuming less and cutting on my portion sizes. That is an ongoing mission. It's an <laughs> and not buying unnecessary things, foodie wise like treats, but occasionally of treat is good for the soul and morale. So yeah, we all need a bit of chocolate sometimes, especially well, there can be certain female related reasons when we crave chocolate. So <laughs> not that we need an excuse for a treat. Sometimes a little bit of what you fancy does you good. So I'll be back soon. I'm going to start mixing these, put them in the cases. I'll show you when they're done. Back soon. Here we are. So this is the crispy cakes. I used a bit more of that orange topping. I've given most of it to my mum to use with my nephew for baking. But what I've got left here, I'm going to save for Halloween for making some spooky, spooktastic frugal snacks. So watch this space. And at Halloween, we can have some fun treats. What I'm going to do instead is do a taste test with what's here. It doesn't have the orange. Uh, the orange is going to make them pretty sickly sweet, but they'll give me a good energy rush. <laughs> I don't need much, one or two at a time, but they're going to go in the freezer and they should last a good while, hopefully. But here's the tasty chocolatey marshmallowy mix. I know it's going to taste great, but here goes. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Yep, really delicious, but I'm making such a mess. So I'm going to go before I get chocolate chops here. <laughs> Thanks a million for watching and very best wishes to you. See you next time. Take care. Bye.